leg on that side pedal. Get that curve in there. Get the other one. A little feathering in the brake. Right there. Gotta keep it safe. So I get a question a lot from, uh, from people. I said, they want to know, how do I lose weight when I'm riding my bike? So what, the, what do I tell them? A, get on the bike and start riding it, right? No, actually that's not what I say to them. So there is a relationship between uh, the cardiovascular system and how hard you're working um, and the cadence that you're riding at. So for people that are really, really want to lose some weight, and they want to do it very effectively, what you want to start doing is high, have a higher cadence on your bike. I'm riding now, it's about 10 miles so far, and uh, going up the grade here. <laughs> so one of the things to talk about is how to ride your bike. So cadence, power, all that good stuff. So one of the things that uh, you want to look at is, especially going uphill, you want to keep your cadence high if you can and if you're on e-bike that's the time to use the assistance to keep the cadence a little bit higher and keep the tension and the gears lower bike and what is a higher cadence higher cadence is talking about sort of 100 to 105 rpms on your uh, pedals you want to keep those things moving pretty quickly so that's actually a harder thing to do than you might think, because most people have a natural cadence in and around 90 RPMs when it feels kind of comfortable. It's that balance between your strength and the balance between spinning your wheels around, right? So once you start spinning your wheels around, if you will, or spinning your, your legs, and you have to do it at a little higher cadence, this is when your heart rate is gonna start to come up a little bit and it's gonna push into your cardio rest zones. You're gonna get. Yeah, so that's kind of what the pros do these days. Didn't also be, didn't be the case all the time. There was a time when they kept a very high uh, power level, big gears, grinding it up. Not the case anymore. And you have to do it at a little higher cadence. This is when your heart rate is going to start to come up a little bit and it's going to push into your cardio rest zones. You're going to get more towards your uh, VO2 max than if you're going at a lower cadence, which let's say 75 or 80. Now this is actually true even if you're pushing a heavier gear. So let's say you, you think, oh, you know what? I need to lose some weight. I'm gonna go get my bike. I'm gonna find the, a nice mediocre hill to go up on, and I'm gonna go up and down that hill many times, and I'm, I'm gonna lose my weight that way. Well, what's gonna happen is that because you're pushing your legs more, you're pushing the anaerobic system, and you, your heart rate actually doesn't stay quite as high. So the analogy is that if I'm going to walk or am I going to run, right? Or I'm going to jog. So as you jog, your legs have a higher cadence. As you run, you have an even higher cadence. And as you sprint, you have your highest cadence. But here's the thing. If you sprint really, really hard on, on running, what you end up doing is pushing into your anaerobic system, right? And that's what we're not trying to get to if you're trying to do fat burning. But if you're able to jog or to, you know, heavier run, if you will, uh, to a point where that you can sustain that 70% of your age predicted max heart rate, then you're going to be in that aerobic burning zones. A little bike touring action here. A little bit easier on this little flat right here. This is uh, <clears throat> the cadence of 92, how about 150 watts, and uh, sitting around you know 18 19 miles an hour, just kind of taking it easy. Those last sets of hills were something else. Increase the uh, cadence a little bit, going up to 97, and as it got up to 8 98, so. You know, I'm still sitting around 18 miles an hour, but still a little, uh, a little easier on the legs. So you can feel that tension come off. But then you can kind of feel the uh, cardio system ramp up a little bit more. So if I had to do that subjective scale from 0 to 5, ah, what am I saying, 0 to 10, 
and 10 would be like, man, I can, I can only sustain this for a couple seconds. Uh, this is a solid five. You know, I feel like I'm about 50% of my effort here. You know, gear. So let's say you, you think, oh, you know what? I need to lose some weight. I'm gonna go get my bike. I'm gonna find the, a nice mediocre hill to go up on, and I'm gonna go up and down that hill many times, and I'm gonna lose my weight that way. Well, what's gonna happen is that because you're pushing your legs more, you're pushing the anaerobic system, and your heart rate actually doesn't stay quite as high. So the analogy is that if I'm gonna walk, or am I gonna run, right? Or I'm gonna jog. So as you jog, your legs have a higher cadence. As you run, you're, you have an even higher cadence. And as you sprint, you have your highest cadence. But here's the thing, if you sprint really, really hard on, on running, what you end up doing is pushing into your anaerobic system, right? You can modulate the amount of effort uh, in terms of, you know, are you gonna run a big ring? Or are you gonna small ring? Are you gonna try to keep the higher cadence? Or are you gonna rest the heart by uh, making legs work a bit more? Or, you know, can you ramp up the heart rate and work to more of that maximal by uh, increasing your revolutions per minute? Now, if you're in a race, it's a different story. You need that match between what you can get out of speed or whatever. But just for you know recreational riding and for fitness riding, that's what we're talking about. This is some things that you can ultimately think about. You know. So right now I'm going up this like nice little hill, and uh, you know I'm about 16 miles an hour. There is no pedal assist unit on. I'm about 94 RPMs. I'm gonna drop it down to 102 and have 170 watts or so, 97 RPMs, pretty good, 91, 90, 88. So I'm dropping down. So that's gonna be more legs at this point. So if I bump up one on my power assist unit, well, there we go. So now I'm back up to 92, 95, you know, so. This is why you can maintain a higher level of fitness in terms of cardiovascular fitness on a regular bike, sorry, on an e-bike, because you're not going into the leg burn. Now, the leg burn is different. That's power from your legs. You can certainly work on that. And, uh, but you, have, you can selectorize this if you want. So if I take that unit off, Okay, now I'm resting the legs, pardon me, I'm resting the CV system, and just pumping the legs. The power goes up, of course, manually, but the cadence goes down, and we're cresting the top of the hill. Big win. So pushing a heavier gear at a slower cadence isn't really better, in my opinion, to actually going faster with your RPMs and lowering the tension. In fact, that's how the pros do it. So if you look at how compact cassettes work, how the gearing works, how the pros do, without getting into a lot of detail, you find the pros are really good at conserving their energy and being able to push gears that make sense to them at higher RPMs. I think a lot of convention was thinking that you have high gears, you know, you're cranking a lot, that gives you more power in your legs. But what that does is slows your heart rate down. So if you got too much slow heart rate, you're not gonna get where you wanna be. You know, you're not gonna stay in those cardio fitness zones. I mean, you're gonna get the legs but you can use that stuff to your advantage. You can rest the cardio rest system, but burn the legs out. So you can kind of go back and forth. You know what you want to achieve. That's what a lot of spin classes do. Here's our little hill. Okay, still maintain 116. 109 RPMs, 105 RPMs. Still going. In fact, that's what Lance Armstrong ended up 
doing and bringing to the sport in cycling in the first place was a higher cadence. And that's how, well, he was able to win races, but he was able to win races with blood doping. Yes, I get that. But he, uh, but he brought that to the fore and it's still used today because it, it actually works. And if you think about why did Lance Armstrong take Epogen to start to improve his overall oxygen in his blood is because he was using the higher levels of cardiovascular fitness than most people would ever dream of, which means that he had to have more oxygen delivered to the muscles because he was basically sprinting all the time at 110 plus RPMs. And he had his bikes, of course, they're geared out a little different than yours and I are, to make sure that he could he could really keep those cranks going. And that's how, and the reason why, that we needed to get more oxygen to his legs and throughout his body to be successful as he was. But let's back off from that and just think about from the physiology that you need to use when you're trying to lose some weight is higher cadence, not crazy cadence, and a smaller gear. But, uh... It's a good section. We're gonna head up to uh, to the hill. Kind of birds there, cool. So here, even on the flats, I'm keeping an RPM right now of uh, 104, 105. I've got 143 watts of power. I'm cruising at uh, 28 miles an hour, 29 miles an hour. So you know, keeping those RPMs up. If you can get you that speed, it also gets you that cardio rest, that cardiovascular fitness you're trying to get at. You know, helps you lose the weight. So when I'm traveling down a hill, as in this little piece of video clip, as I'm going down, I'm actually still mindful of my revolutions per minute. So I am looking at if I want to maintain a heart rate and keep it going at a higher level, I will be spinning those wheels even as I'm going downhill, I don't give it up. And I actually look at my power meter as well to make sure there is some power that's still being pushed in addition to maintaining a higher cadence. Now I can certainly take some of the opportunity to rest on those hills going down, which means no power and no spinning. But um, I prefer when I'm trying to train not to do that. So don't always think about downhill as a, as a period of time where you can just kind of relax and just let it go. You, you don't want to do that necessarily. Also, you want to be very mindful when you're going downhill to, of course, feather the brakes, which means to really kind of, you know, use the front brake a little bit more and then just kind of feather the back brake so the brakes don't get too hot on you. To, so that way you can modulate your speed so you're not going to be out of control. And also when you're going on the outside pedal, get that curve in there, get the other one, a little feathering that breaks right there, you gotta keep it safe. So that way you can modulate your speed so you're not going to be out of control and also when you're going around corners that you really get the weight onto that outside uh, edge depending on, on the outside foot, pardon me, to really push the bike into the ground and get get some good bike handling as you're going around corners, especially as you pick up speed. It's, it can be very, uh, uh, very daunting uh, to start off with. So just be careful of that It's going on. Um, going uphill, very important when you're going uphill to try to maintain the cadence. And if you're able to drop your gears or you have a compact cassette that you can continue to modulate the, the gearing to keep the pace going, right? That's the whole point of having those cassettes in there, right? So if you can do that, that's great. Thanks very much, so much for watching this video. We really, really super appreciate it. Please hit the like button. I look forward to the next video. And if you have questions, please put them in the comments below and I will get back to you. Thanks so much, Joe.